Joining me today is Kyle Lynch. We're going to talk about a lot of things relating to mental health. We all deal with depression and anxiety in varying degrees and frequencies. So his approach is a little different, and I'm pretty curious. So it's going to be a great episode. My name is Mike. Every week I discuss topics that I care about. Hopefully you find them of value as well. Today's Daily Dose is partly brought to you by Grassdoor, cannabis delivery made simple. Save a whopping 40% off on your first purchase. Just use the code DAILY at checkout. And the rest of the links are down below if you want to help support the channel. Good morning. Yeah, man. It's a beautiful day today. <laughs> is it? Yeah, it really is, man. I love you got, it. You got the kids up into school? School, no. They're oh. still very young. So it's just mostly like breakfast and fucking everything else. The crying, the screaming. Oh, no. <laughs> They're children, you know? That's, yeah. that's just how they are. Um, yeah, got to let them uh, get that stuff out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, and wow. so some, some days are super easy, man. And they're very cooperative, I guess is the word. Some days they're not. <laughs> to, to, today we're in between so we're in between there like they were pretty good today um i still managed to be late by five minutes oh uh, it's all good don't even sweat it it's like this all the time man <laughs> I'm, I'm never on time to anything <laughs> never a single fucking thing and you know what's funny about that is um i don't uh there's very few things i feel urgency about Mm. you know to where i'm like oh no 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 this this has to be we have to be on time to this um because uh it could be something very very time sensitive uh and have serious impacts but uh virtually the rest of everything else going on i generally feel as if uh like what's the what's the issue it's okay we can be a few minutes late what's the rush um that does backfire sometimes. So, yeah, I mean, I see it from all different angles. Like, I'm with you, where it's like, why take life so seriously? It's like, can we be easy going about it? And then I yeah. wanted to ask the question of like, um, what's it feel like when something is urgent for you? It's like, what's that feeling in your body? If there is a feeling. Then there's I, the other part of me. It's like, like I don't feel disrespected at all. If, like you're running late, where it's like me personally, like I'm totally cool with it. But I imagine some other people might like get upset with it. They so may, yeah. It's like thinking about like other people at the same time. So it's kind of like finding the balance and um, it's dance, dance of life. I think you say it best, though. <laughs> it, just you know, don't take shit so damn seriously, um, unless it really warrants it. Can be different for everyone, I guess. Yep. How you been? Oh, that's a load of question. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know that I can't take small talk questions as like a mental health counselor. It's like my mind automatically goes to like, man, well, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of existential stuff going on, all this stuff happening on my life. It's it's hard to be superficial now nowadays. Where well, it's like it's like I'm being automatically fake when I am. Well, don't be fake, okay? There's nothing. Uh, be sincere. Uh, yeah. You know, when, when I when I ask you a superficial question, just be like, shut up. Well, I don't, don't think it's... Don't ask me that. <laughs> I think people can take it superficially. I mean, you could take any question as deep as you want to take it. It's like, yeah. you can be like, oh, how's the weather? It's like, all right, weather's nice, but it's like... Like we could go deep into weather too. It's like, what is the weather? <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> what I mean, is, I like I like, like all types of weather, elements. but it is beautiful today. You're uh, you're on the east coast or somewhere on the east. Yeah, I'm on uh, Long Island. I'm wow, it's it's cloudy today. Mm. But I feel like it's it's interesting with conversations where it's like how we view kind of like the layers of it. And like the superficiality of just like external things. So just like as external the conversation is, then it's not as deep as like once we start to like get closer to ourselves and like talking about ourselves, then it feels like it's more impactful and it's like it can be more difficult. 
So just like we could be talking about other people, um, that's very external. And then we could be talking about the weather, it's very external. We'd be talking about events going on in the world, it's very external. But then it's like we get to like our bodies, like talking about like our looks, and it's like that's another level superficiality. But then it's like it's like exploring that deeper stuff, and it's like sometimes that could be hard to communicate. That's where my uh, mind goes. <laughs> I don't know, man. I you know depending on you know the patients you may be having. You said you were working more with children. Is that right? Uh, adolescents, uh, teenagers, some adults. Okay. Well, typically, it's uh, when you think of psychology, right? Yeah. Um, and how like people perceive it is, I don't want to talk about my feelings, man. Um, or um, the question that uh, we see uh, sometimes in movies or whatever, it's like, well, how does that make you feel? Um, reminds me of a, a scene of uh, Sopranos. Hmm. I don't know if you've ever seen it, um, the the one I'm thinking about. But, uh, you know, I feel like it's so important to have the skills of self-reflection. So you can yeah. dive deep, you can analyze uh, a lot of things. Um, and it allows you to really begin to understand parts of yourself, your, your line of thinking, your emotional output. Mm -hmm. Um there's so, like so many benefits to just having this single skill. Um, and I was doing a lot of research before our episode, before I got to speak to you again. Um, I know we spoke for a great deal last time, uh, but I wanted to learn more about like what you're doing. And I, I noticed a lot of cool things that on your site, some of the services you're offering. I said, wow, this is really interesting. Um, and do you, uh, do you find... Do you find it where when you're working with some of your patients um, on a clinical level, are these people referred to you or are you working for uh, some medical company or something like that? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm at a private practice that's owned by someone else and they have patients come in and they're like, they refer them out to all the therapists that are, that are working in the practice and they my supervisor and the administrative people just know it's like, oh, this person's for Kyle. And it's like, I feel like I attract certain people where it's like, it's, I find it so interesting that I tend to attract a lot of transgender clients. Okay. And I think this is because like, I, I'm so curious about like identity, like asking myself, like, who am I? And like during my existential crisis in my early 30s, like that's when I like really asked that question. And like I even thought about transgender people. Like I thought about male, female, our social roles, just like everything we identify with. And like I broke it down like, well, that's not who we are because like we could take that away and it's just like we still exist. And so it's like I feel like the universe is bringing me patience to kind of show me what it's like to identify as that. But I also believe like we're more than just one thing. So just like the idea of identity is like, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if it's real. It's like maybe just what our mind makes up. We like to label things. The mind likes to label. Sure. I, I, I would say so. This is a very touchy subject, as I'm sure you know right now. It's um, uh, transgender the the roles the the identity issues um, biologically speaking it's though some people may be pissed off about this but there there's two genders I mean uh, but at the same time I think what you said makes the most sense when we look at it from a broader perspective it's uh, it's an identity thing as People are trying to figure themselves out maybe for the first time ever. I did read your bio and it did speak about like going through that moment in time in your life and realizing um, everything you had thought you were may not necessarily be true. Believe it or not, I experienced this too back in 2017 and 2018. I started taking mushrooms for it. Uh, I've spoken a great deal about it on this channel and my other channels. Um it's 
it's a powerful substance, but that's where the where the skills of self reflection became very powerful because it's very powerful under the influence of psilocybin mushrooms. And uh, I think a lot of people can benefit either from that or just, you know, asking that question, uh, who Mm -hmm. am I really? Um, And when you start like kind of putting together the, these pieces of like what you thought you were, right. It could be what you do, right. Like, Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, for a long time, my work became my identity. I'm like, am, am I this? This is just what I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like that could change and you'll still exist. <laughs> so like, it, so it's absolutely. like, that's not, that's not me, but it's like at the same time, yeah, it's like what part of us is identifying with that? And I feel like that's just, I believe that it's, I mean, not to sound cliche, but it is like the universe wants to experience multiple versions of itself. And so it's like we need to have these kind of boundaries or kind of like boxed in identities to like to have this feeling of separateness. So it's like so we can have these these experiences like we're communicating with each other. We have different perspectives on things and we could we could feel growth within ourselves. Like we could f- have certain experiences within ourselves like based on kind of like bouncing off of each other. Um so I feel like that's that's the purpose of having all these different identities. That's my belief. Yeah. Well, there there's there is a lot of benefit uh, to like th- for self discovery, um, and I feel like that you can push those boundaries quite a bit, right? As I went through your bio more and more, it's like you were uh, applying so many things and you were uh, getting out of your comfort zone, which was mm. so very important. And yep. you, you begin to realize the, these limitations are not real. They're just limitations of the mind that say, like, yep. I can't do this. And it could be discomfort that you feel when you do something. It could be uh, shame. It could be fear of judgment. Uh so all of these like social constructs that they just kind of like come onto the brain um, or a person's mind, um, diminishing their, uh, I want to say their potential for greatness, whatever that could, whatever that means, but you got to push those boundaries. A hundred percent. I think you nailed it right there. Just kind of like recognizing things that kind of make us feel uncomfortable and it's like, but still doing it. And just like trying to grow from it. And it's like, what are we getting out of those experiences? It's like, do we like to feel uncomfortable and then still doing something and then being like afterwards, like, oh, like, that was was like, I'm so proud of myself that I did that. Like, I feel like I've grown from it. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And pushing those boundaries of who we think we are and what we think we can do. And I feel like maybe. I mean, for me, I know what humans are capable of. Like, I believe we're capable. Of anything, I mean, like, look at everything that exists. It's like, who's to say what's not possible? So for me, it's, I get frustrated with myself where it's like, man, I believe anything is possible. So it's like, why am I holding myself back from doing certain things? Like, why am I, like, why is my life the way it is? Not that my life is bad, but it's like, it can be so much more, but it's like, then I get ahead of myself. It's like, oh, well, if I, gain all this stuff in my life, then it's like, then I see myself like, oh, that didn't make me happy either. So it's like, then it's asking the questions like, what, what do we really want? And it's like, what do we really want? It's like, do we just come down to a feeling of just like, oh, I just want to feel like happy, but I just like, I don't want to feel happy all the time. And it's like, oh, do I want to feel light all the time? Like, oh, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe sometimes I want to feel like garbage and feel and just like have that experience too. And this is, I feel like it's all the mind. <laughs> it's like trying to figure things out. Yeah. It's, it's all of those things. And, um, uh, having the, the capacity, um, to hold back, you, you know, just, um, reaction and, you know, sometimes things are good and sometimes things are bad. Learning to just, uh, have acceptance, uh, as things happen, you know, and not be too reactive. Because uh, life is just so interesting in the universe and the interconnectedness of everything. I've lived long enough to experience it so many times that I say it's not a coincidence no. that um, that what 
what uh, what can be perceived as negative and bad, where you have the immediate reaction of anger and frustration, uh, can later turn into something that's like, oh, well, that was a blessing in disguise. I had no, you know, could have never imagined. So whole, reserving that reaction and just like, man, that sucks, but it is what it is. I accept it. And you keep, you keep pushing forward. And in time, it reveals exactly what that that may have been and what it can turn into um so what what's interesting like what he had said and i was thinking um i wanted to ask you a question about it so the practice you work for they're sending you more and more um individuals with um whatever crisis they may be going through mental crisis but they happen to be transgender individuals um, without revealing any details, obviously, because there's doctor patient privileges and things like that. I mean, um, why do you think there's a growing number who are seeking mental health services? Well, I'm not seeing just trans people. Um, I've just kind of recognized that as I, I've found it interesting that I do have like a handful of transgender. Okay. And that's not something I promote as a specialty of mine. Um, but I just feel like the universe brings me those people because they need uh, you. They, I, I mean, that feels nice to, like, I feel like I would, like, if I want to be needed. Sometimes I feel like, like, oh man, it's like, are they getting anything out of this? And I always tell my clients, it's like, my goal ultimately, and if we go astray with it, my goal is just always to come back to what's going on internally for the client. Um, and I don't know if I'm straying away from your question right now, but um, I've just noticed like with a lot of my, my clients, like they'll be talking about like other things, like other people and the things that have like happened in the past are just like, when I see them talking about all this other stuff, I'm just like trying to bring them like, what well, like, come here like come, yeah come that's what you meant that. by external yeah so just like what's going on for you internally right now in this moment mm. where it's like i feel like i try to bring people into their bodies so it's like what you're saying before about us how like i think you're saying about how like other th situations can make us angry or it's like how do we react to it but it's like first having like awareness of like what's happening in our bodies in this moment. So it's like, I like to look at things as like energy. So it's like energy in our body. Sure. We could look at the psychology of it too, but it's like all interconnected. Um, I feel gravitated towards do the energetic body kind of release where it's like that unseen stuff that we don't know how to put words to it. Um, not all the time, but it's like really getting into the body and it's like feeling light there. So it's like, how can we feel light in the body? I'm really big on energy, um, have been for so many years and it's exactly what you said. It's the, the slight, the little bit of understanding that we have that, um, where we can, kind of sense it but it's unseen so it oftentimes is disregarded right um but energy does not dissipate or disappear it, it transfers that's just how it works um we can talk we can see it from all forms and i've been so fascinated by the human body and the human mind um just kind of like how we're made up and this is where it's led me to really dive and kind of examine these things of you know the thought processes the the uh external like the output of reaction and feelings and emotion and um to to where i've come to these conclusions on my own but the little bit of science definitely shows us there's we we are these energy beings and we have so much power but a lot of it is just wasted 
on dumb shit most of the time. All the time, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Ugh. And so, like, here we have this opportunity for the next century to really thrust humanity into uh, uh, a phase of growth and evolution that we we have not seen maybe since the uh since the ancient times there's you know there's a lot of evidence for ancient civilizations to have had incredible knowledge oh yeah where the where the fuck did this come from where do they where do they have these understandings and so i feel like it's kind of re it's cycling back and we're and if we do it right and there aren't private interests globally powerful interests that want to uh deviate us then you know we may be able to go through this uh incredible uh, evolution like mind body and spirit the world can be such a better place um if we can um collectively decide that this is what we want to do to improve ourselves and to help improve each other uh and it's drastic they're drastic improvements oftentimes like once you kind of get there you start making these giant leaps and i saw it in your bio as you were going through this you're like i i'm doing things and i'm achieving things that i couldn't really believe uh were happening for me um and that's the transformation as you began to answer some of these questions in your life and um dissect the uh the specific uh it's the word I'm looking for, just the specific uh, feelings you were experiencing at the time. I mean, you say you're early 30s. You don't look a day over 38. Oh, well, I'm actually 40 now. I had my existential crisis in my early 30s. Got it. Uh, well, you look you good, were, man. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, you were speaking to my soul about just kind of like bringing ancient knowledge back to like everyday life. Um, an example, like I give you an example of something that happened to me yesterday. I'm like, yesterday, last night we had a full moon. So I learned this um, divination tool that shamans use. It's called sand painting and it's for manifesting. Where you just go out to nature, you make a hexagon on the ground with sticks. And so say, I don't know, what's something we want to manifest? So, all right, let's, let's be really simple. Um, say we want like a new car. So it's like you pick up a rock, you're like, this is me. You put it in the hexagon, you're like, this is the new car that I want. You can pick up another rock. It's like, I need more money for this, for this new car. So you could have like flower petals represent money. So it's like, it seems like very witchcrafty. But I did my sand paintings last night in the woods. I, I walked through this trail, I made some sand paintings. And then as I was walking out, for the first time ever, I saw a gray horned owl. And I've heard them around here like Hootam before, but I've never seen them. I'm like, oh my God. And I'm like doing shamanic training right now and learning about like spirit animals and animal totems. So I'm like, all right, what does this mean? So I grab um, this book I have on all the animal totems. And it just like, it resonated so like perfectly with what I was manifesting. And like, <laughs> It blew my mind. And another book that I had on top of it is about astral projection. And that book fell on the ground as I was grabbing the, the animal totem book. And as I was reading the description of like what it means to have a, a great horned owl as a totem, it talks about astral projection. And I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> it's like, so it's like seeing all these connections and it's like, experiencing the world that way, experiencing nature that way in like an uncommon and mystical, magical way. It just like, it can be difficult to see the world that way in the society that we live. Just like we're on our computers all the time. It's like, we're not seeing the signs from nature. Well, I'm not anyway, where it's like, this is a new thing that I'm trying to learn. Um, where it's like, yeah, if ever, everything's interconnected, it's like the universe is always showing us signs, just like, if I cut my finger, my finger is going to tell me like, hey, you cut your finger, that's going to hurt. It's like there is information right there. It's like my finger is over here. And if we think we're all interconnected to everything, then it's like, oh, me seeing this owl, 
this is going to be information for me to make my life better. So how can we use this? Uh, there's so much to like unpack here. Uh, the, the astral projection is interesting. I like uh, reading briefly on what uh, the National Institute of Health has talked about it and um, and then just kind of diving deeper into some other areas. Uh, you know, from a medical study perspective, they say that's oftentimes associated with, uh, it's like disassociative mm-hmm. um, uh, kind of uh, symptoms for, for some. But I think back on some of the... Uh, Projects that were run, black operation projects by the government and CIA running these programs of astral projection. And they were, you know, they had uh, some woman. And I know that the Soviet Union had run very similar projects. And these people were able to tell from a from a um, from a room that they were in Mm -hmm. um, where they were being studied. And they were asked to like, okay, tell us what you see. And they were able to describe in detail a very specific location, even though they've never been there, right? And it's quite fascinating just um, thinking about how long ago that was. You know, we're talking 50 plus years ago where they were experimenting with these things and wanting to wanting to see obviously it's always about military and intelligence um related uh, application so uh but outside of that there are these powerful aspects that can be so much more i mean imagine seeing the world but not seeing the world if you can if you can uh, have the ability to project in that way and just be out of your body and just free flowing wherever you may want to go and see so many things. The, uh, the data I think suggests that it's, uh, it's not that common. Very, very few people can actually do it. Uh, the same would be said about, uh, what was it? That's the astral projection. Then there was, uh, something else. Um, the uh, the lucid dreaming i think there was you mm-hmm. know, a very very small number of people can do it uh frequently but most have at least experienced it once uh, i was reading about it last night and i think uh i think i had a lucid dream last night believe it or not um and when i woke up i'm like this is weird you know, it was a very strange dream, <laughs> I, I, you know, um, and it was a kind of a terrifying dream. I, I uh, mm. there was like some level of control. And then there and then at times I felt like I didn't have any control. And that's kind of like a basis of lucid dreaming. You can control it. You can change the course of like what you're experiencing. But um, I found it really just interesting after just reading about it. I um, felt like as if I was having one. Um, but like how would if it was possible how would somebody practice this if i wanted to practice this the astral projection yep. the lucid dreaming how could i oh there's there's so many techniques you could do um for lucid lucid dreaming uh the first thing i feel like w- that would be helpful is just to like question your reality while you're awake it's like anytime you walk into a, a new room, just kind of like question reality, be like, where am I? Like, what's going on here? And nothing you can do is look at your hand. So like do this consistently during the day. And then when you're dreaming, your mind still has this um, kind of way of doing things. So it's just like you consistently walk into a new room and question reality, look at your hand. And so you bring that habit into the dream world. When you bring it into the dream world and you start to question, where, what is, what's going on here? And then you look at your hand and your hand melts away in the dream. Then you're like, holy crap, I'm dreaming. And it's like, it just like, it sparks like, oh, I'm awake. And then you have like the same awareness that you have in this, like how we have it now, you have it in the dream world. It's like, all right, I know I'm in a dream now. I know my body's in a bed. And it's like, 
I've had this experience where it's like I get too excited. I'm like, yes, like I accomplished it. I'm totally aware that I'm dreaming. And that excitement wakes me up. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> it's like you have to find that balance. And you want to stay with that awareness. And something that did help me, um, and I feel like we, it, like tools need to be changed constantly. But when I first started out, started out, once I became lucid in a dream, I would say to myself, clarity now, clarity now, clarity now. So just staying like clear in the dream. And then it's like, what do you want to do in the dream? It's like, what's your intention? It's like you could talk to dream characters. You can meditate, see where that takes you. <laughs> Man, that, that takes you to a whole nother. <laughs> see where that, that takes you. That, I guess there's a lot of experimentation. That, that'll take you to astral projection. Yeah, that's fascinating, man. There's, there, I mean, the meta, the metaphysical of existence. Just uh, again, it's disregarded, and I think there's probably a little more interest now. Uh, it's got kind of growing an in interest. People are, you know, uh, for one reason or another, as people want to escape their reality. Uh, some do it with drugs. Some do it with alcohol. Some do it with. Um, social media and then there's some people who are like this is interesting i want to try it this way um and i can certainly relate i uh but my fascination is what drives the uh the the continuous research of like what is this and the experimentation and and trying things for myself to see uh because i am a firm believer there's there's something very divine about existence about life these these brains are like supercomputers, just so beautifully constructed. It's not to say that life is perfect. The circumstances of everyday life are certainly difficult, and life is fucking hard for everybody in varying degrees. It's not it's not perfect for anybody necessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we just step away from that and we look at um, the uh, the construct of the body, the mind the existence and as you're flowing through linear time you find it to be so uh, so magical and in some ways at least i do mm. have for a while and so i try to stay in that plane of existence as as long as i can um because as soon as as soon as i exit such a like mindset that's when negative thoughts appear and self-doubt appears and um um and many other things that kind of um, pull me out and now i'm back into this world of like fear just uh fear-based decision making and yeah. uh and like that's just no good i mean what is there to be afraid of there's nothing man you know we we will wake up tomorrow our lives will pretty much be relatively the same um, and it's, I, I mean, I have a unique perspective, just the kind of lifestyle I live and the work that I do. So there's always like a balance of uncertainty and fear and, and excitement and exploration. It's the best way I can put it. Yeah. I like how you put that. And just like going back to what you said before of, um, looking at it with like, Exploring and like bringing kind of like a childlike essence to life, where it's like we become these adults and it's like, all right, man, what we, we get so serious about things. Well, it's like there's a child in, in us too, and it's like <laughs> those like those two aspects of us are like trying to coexist, and um, and talking about just like making decisions based on fear. It's like, all right, well, that's a difference between like anxiety and fear and what it is like and that's where i feel like going into the body and it's like it's it's uh, what's that um that woman's name who does like she helps people like throw away things and she's like does this bring you joy like holding up a piece of clothing ah maria kondo i want to say but um yeah, and it's like I'm making decisions and asking yourself, is this going to bring me joy? It's like, why am I making this decision? And it's like, well, how do I know if this brings me joy? And it's like, then it's like, are we going for a feeling in our body? And it's like, 
how do we get to that that answer? It's like what is what is fear? What is not having fear? Yeah, what are we so fucking afraid of? <laughs> I don't. Know, our bodies, I guess, are in survival mode. Yeah, and there is that biological aspect. Yeah, for sure. You're absolutely right about that. And the, the ego can get in the way, or being seen, and like you talked about before about just like shame and guilt. So it's like there's aspects of ourselves that we hide. So it's like we fear if like we're vulnerable about certain things, then that's just gonna like open up the floodgates of things that we don't want to be seen. So we stay a little hidden. Yeah. I have to agree with that. You know, when I started making videos and it was it was really tough and over the years I can um I can sense that that feeling just melting away and just like I just want to be true to myself. I want to be myself. Mm -hmm. I want to do what I want to do. I don't care about anything else and just being hyper focused on like my ambition, my goals, my focus. Mm -hmm. Um and over the years, I can see it. You know, people will walk into my store with a different like view of me because they have seen my videos before they walk in to make a purchase or just to talk to me about something. Mm -hmm. And and I can sense it. And I don't say anything. I don't, you know, um, but I sense some form of judgment or some form of like just something, right? Um and as time has gone on, I don't even think about it anymore. Like, you know, um, it's just like the trolls that we see online. It's so easy for someone to be a troll. But what are you doing with your time and your life and your efforts and your and your energy? You can't you can sit there and, and be judgmental towards someone else, but at the same time are you having the same courage to go and do something that is out of your comfort zone that, um, that, uh, pushes you to, uh, to improve, um, on many levels. So it's rather, rather curious. Yeah. And I, I, I love this conversation. I was actually just having it with someone about how she's like, let's family members get to her. And there's a part of me that just like, yeah, it's like what they're doing like sucks. Like the way like what they're saying to you and everything. And it's like, oh, let it roll off you, like avoid them. But then there's a part of me that's like, oh, well, no, maybe you'd be like, like not like try to be grateful for it. It's like, oh, this is like triggering something in my body. So it's like there's still something in me that exists that this external stuff is affecting me internally. So it's like, what tension inside of me do we need to release so that doesn't happen? And I don't know if that's like an unrealistic goal. I mean, that feels like that's really tough to not let other people's kind of energies and perceptions and opinions like not get to us. But like, like you said, it's like, it's like we know that it's other people's insecurities that they're putting on other people. And it's like, maybe there's a part of us that feels bad for them. And like, we get so frustrated where it's just like, man, it's like whatever insecurities that you have that's causing you to, to be that troll. It's like, I wish I could help you with it, but it's like, that's your own work. Yeah. Whether they recognize it or not. Yeah. That's all. That's often what I have seen to be the case is, if you don't, if you don't even know that it's a, an issue, you you may not deal with it for a long time um, until it uh, kind of blows up in your face. Uh, but as they say in um, in NA or AA, it's like you get, first you have to recognize <laughs> that there's a problem. <laughs> yeah, 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 and, and not a lot of humans. I mean, it's tough to look at ourselves. In anything, it's like you're sure there's all sorts of stuff I feel like we could work on. And I believe if we kind of put energy in, into the idea that there's something that we need to work on, like, oh, there's something inside of me that, like, you know, whatever it is, then I feel like that will always be our experience. It's like, all right, we fixed something, but what's the next thing we have to work on? 
And it's like, at what point do we get to a level? It's like, oh, no, actually, we're all good. But then it's like, what does that ex- what does that even look like if everyone was just like, I don't want to say kumbaya, but just like no one had insecurities. Everyone was just like felt light in their bodies, had no fear. It's like, could this dimension even exist? Could this 3D dimension even exist without that? And it's like, do we want that? And I don't know. Uh, I would I mean, people may people may want something like that. Yeah, they they may not understand it exactly what it is, uh, but there's just too many like social constructs that do prevent it. Like, you know, uh, content plant platforms want you to consume. Mm. You know, um, food producers want you to consume. So like you're uh, you're you're always in this in this world of uh, of being manipulated in some ways yeah. to uh to to take an action on something that someone else wants you to take uh and it's virtually everything you know going back to what you said uh like we're adults and why are we taking things so seriously and you know all of a sudden these things kind of just change in our lives and um through many of my experiences i have realized man i mean what is an adult you, you know even the adults that make the fucking rules of the world don't even know um you know don't even know what's going on necessarily you no know, one knows just, what's going on yeah no one no i mean that's that's a secret and if like <laughs> if everyone does this it's like like it's just like what is everything just in chaos and it's like i don't i don't know then I think like maybe like spirit or something behind the scenes is, is managing things. And it's like, I trust that stuff. And it's like, yeah, systems are wild, dude. Like I went to UPS just to like return something. And I was like, just imagine like all the stuff that people buy and like return. And I'm just like, how does this system work? And I told the guy, I'm like, I don't know how this works. Like I'm bringing this package to you and it's like, it's going somewhere. And it's like, it just seems like it's impossible. That that's actually a brilliant logistical system. Honestly, I love it. So I need to return <laughs> something to Walmart. I yeah. just tell I just log into my Walmart and it's like start a return. They're like, cool. You can bring it to the store, or you can drop it off at a FedEx. Yeah. So I usually do the FedEx option, and they just give me a QR code. They email me a QR yeah. code. So I I walk into FedEx. I'm like, hey. Here's my QR code. They scan it. They print out a label, slap it onto the item, and it gets sent back. I'm like, this is logistically, um, I'm like, this is fucking brilliant. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Um, I, I just can't <laughs> picture like all the stuff that exists. It's like, <laughs> and the, the, guy's like, the guy who is working there, he's like, I don't know either. And he's like, I don't even want to ask that question. And I'm like, and I started thinking, I'm like, you know what? You're you're right. So once I feel like we start asking questions, then the universe is like, oh, here here are some answers. Here's like, you want to learn more about this? Here you go. Here's an experience. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I I, I take that question away. I don't want to yeah. know about it. It's all good. Uh, let's save our energy for something much more <laughs> worthwhile. For example, yeah. <laughs> a, a one of the services you you offer on your site, which I found really interesting, and I had seen this as a young boy. Um, now I, I may mispronounce it, but I think it's Reiki. Ah, uh, Reiki. Re- Reiki. Yeah, yeah, Reiki. So as a young boy, yeah. way before YouTube, um, I saw it on network television somewhere, and there was like this Chinese master who was using um, the energy of his being to heal people. And that left me with quite an impression as a boy. And I'm like, this is really amazing. And so here we are, you know, you fast forward. Um, and it looks like you practice it, but, uh, and you offer this service, but I say to myself, I'm I'm like, this is like old Eastern medicine and it's probably existed for a while. According to the data, it says it's been practiced for about a century, but I would think it's probably longer than that. Um, Um, terrible history and time. So I don't know. But it's, I, I, it's ancient. Yeah. I mean, the power of chi and all of these, you know, all of these concepts. I mean, they they didn't start a century ago. I, I mean, maybe they started documenting a century ago yep. uh, in some form. But it's fascinating to me. Um, can you uh, 
Can you speak to me about that? I'm I'm just curious, like what what your experiences with this particular uh, practice is. Sure. Um, and my initiation to this practice, I think, stems from my existential crisis again of like question, who am I? And it's like really feeling into my being and like, oh, what's that? like that slight tingling feeling in my hands. It's like, is that me? Like, what is that? Is that my blood flowing? Like, what the heck is that? And it's like being curious about all the sensations in my body. It's like, oh, what part of that is me? And I feel like this is when like the energy work started to kind of like present itself in my life. Um, And I went into it more of just like very mental kind of curious kind of learning type of thing. Um, I just see it. And it's the Reiki practitioner, they're not the one doing the healing. It's the energy exists and it's just like channeling through the Reiki practitioner into the client. I ultimately think it's just the client setting the intention that they want to heal something. So it's like any energy blocks within them that they're now setting an intention that they want to kind of break up so the energy can flow and then their energy inside of them, once things are flowing in them, then their external reality reflects differently. So if we look at the external as a reflection of the internal, then what we want to do is just kind of make that stuff lighter. Um, and I've had, as a patient of Reiki, I've had some emotional releases from like grieving and stuff. And I don't know if it was the practitioner that I felt comfortable with, like her energy, or it was the practice itself. But I just like, I didn't talk about anything. It was just like, she just put hand, her hands like on certain parts of my body. Just sat with myself, sat with what was going on inside of me. All of a sudden, a couple of tears start coming out, and then just like keep on relaxing into it. And it's like, all right, more is coming out. More is coming out. And so it's like, and what you're talking about before about like bringing the ancient stuff back. I feel like the ancient stuff, ancient stuff has been like steeped in our reality for so long that it's so powerful. But it is like our, our, our minds are like so focused on like science and everything. It's like, that's reality. That's real. Because I don't know if our minds can like kind of box in that that magical reality. It's like, if we can't box it in, kind of like label and figure it, like how it all works, and it's like, I don't want to deal with it. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, we expect the scientific method to, uh, to be able to uh, decipher these things. But um, I say sometimes, maybe the scientific method isn't necessarily flawed, but we just... Mm-hmm haven't figured out the way to quantify these these practices the the outcomes and the their functionality um it's beyond us and i i have thought about this too totally way above me but i said to myself we have these laws of physics that we believe to be universal however Mm -hmm. we've never necessarily tested them beyond the solar system or even beyond that um to to think about like the physics that we know are they exactly the same if uh we try to demonstrate a very specific method in a solar system with two suns you know um with maybe denser metals and and atoms and things like that um again way above me but I think about these things. Literally and, and figuratively. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, after, yeah, man. Once you start like throwing our minds into space, it just like everything gets thrown out the window. It's like then I feel like then we have to start like to ground ourselves in a way. Um and find the balance of taking life seriously but not so seriously. No. Yeah. I don't really know what that means, like take something seriously. I guess maybe just like appreciate it or be grateful for it and enjoy it, maybe. It, it's a little bit of everything, right? You take something so seriously that it's um, 
you know, it can have a negative impact on your emotional health or your psychological health. So, you know, being late to something. So my, my wife deals with this, um, <laughs> she, you know, uh, a play date for her kids and she's freaking out like we're we're running late i'm like it's all right dude it's not that bad they'll understand you know it's uh it's okay try to relax um and um and she finds it difficult at times uh to to heed what i say uh but it's uh that's just one one aspect out of you know i want to say millions of uh possibilities of how people uh, take things too seriously, living in the moment, being, you know, just living in gratitude and, uh, and just kind of flowing through time. Uh, it's not to say that some things don't require that level of urgency or attention. Um, it just depends on the activity uh, and the priority level you set on it. So, uh there's aspects too that people would say, well, if you're not punctual, then, you know, you're being disrespectful of the counterparty or s at least some, some form of that. And, you, you know, or you didn't prioritize this. Um, so therefore, like you may, you don't think that it's that important to you, but, you know, the person's time that you're wasting uh, essentially is, uh, has like these variable outcomes as well i can give you an example a couple of interviews ago i had a uh, a uh, functional medicine practitioner on um, she had practiced uh, medicine in a hospital for some time she did a residency and she realized this is like hey man this is not medicine what are we doing mm -hmm. all they care about is billable hours yep. uh, and um, but i was i was late by 10 minutes and she canceled on me and, uh, it, you know, of course it was the s similar situation, just dealing with my kids, you know, I got to take care of them first. They, they are my first priority in the morning and both parents need to have an adequate amount of attention for that. And we try to split up the, uh, the responsibility equally. Um, but, uh, she was super understanding. However, I felt at that moment, I'm like, damn, I wasted her time. She does have other appointments, you know? And, uh, it's, it was terrible of me to think like, it's just 10 minutes, you know, like you'll be all right. But no, in that instance, it wasn't all right. Uh, thankfully we did reschedule, but it's just an example. Um, uh, there are many like it. Yeah. And a bunch of things came to my mind hearing you speak of, um, just like the, the dynamics between you and your wife, it's like. In order for this experience, for you guys to have this experience in this dimension as your beings, it's like for you to identify as you as this individual person who's like okay with being late sometimes. It's like that's a part of you that you identify with. And so it's like we need the opposite of that too, where it's like in order for you to exist, like she needs to exist. It's like <laughs> if we identify as someone who's like, I'm always on time. I'm always on time. Well, it's like, well, that idea of always being on time, if that idea exists, then the opposite has to be like exist too. So yeah, then that, yeah. that creates a reality that creates an experience. And then the other thing that came to mind, I'm curious about and not to go like deep into your, to your life, but just kind of curious of like how your parents were with like giving you time and being on time for you. Um, that was a struggle, man. My parents, uh, had a very difficult relationship. They divorced early. I witnessed, uh, a lot of abuse, not, yeah. not towards me. It was mostly neglect towards me as a, uh, as a child because it just, uh, the difficulties of life and relationship and marriage and work balance, earning enough to survive. Um, we are first generation, so it took a lot of balls and courage to leave a country that you originate from and come to a place yeah. you know nothing about um, and raise your children. Uh, but that had really deep consequences of being unprepared for such a decision. So I'd say what, what I reflect on, I say that, yeah, 
there was a lot of neglect. It just wasn't enough time for us. And yet I still turned out okay um, on some levels. And I've been through a lot in my life. I, you know, I'm, I want to say it's been quite a road, um, but it's one of the reasons why I uh, put so much effort into my children. Like mm -hmm. we created life. That's pretty powerful. From my perspective and view, I'm like, this is so amazing that we created a person. From our first daughter, you know, I said that for like the first two years. Like, babe, look, we made a fucking person, dude. <laughs> this is crazy, man. You know, and and watching the development of personality and uh, behavior and uh, wants and desires and, you know, preferences and so like just so many things that make up uh, a, a a person's kind of um, existence, even at that early age. Uh, it blow, it blows me away and it just makes me grateful to have that experience. It's really, really amazing. And But very important to note that through this, I realize, yeah, not everyone should have kids. You know, this is why we see that uh, there's so much trauma and trauma is a part of the world. Uh, everyone goes through it on some level. And I think they're with the right tools, there's some acceptance, there's, you know, some growth capabilities through it. Like no one's living a perfect life from the day they're born. Uh, it will always have ups and downs. Uh, and so learning to go through that, learning to cope with it, it's, uh, it's very important. Um, but it, uh, it reminds me of something that someone said, you know, they're like, oh, my God, look at what's happening in the world. I'm like, yeah, but it's always been like this. There's always been wars. There's always been, uh, uh, you know, geopolitical issues. There's always been these things have always existed. It's just now you are bombarded with this information on a daily basis because information is moving at the speed of light. But a century ago, these things were happening anyway. And you would only find out, you know, months, maybe years later that something like this was happening. So the like the chaos of the world has always existed. And um, it's just now we're, we we get to see it in real time. And that that's having an effect on people for sure. Um, but like going back to like the children thing, I, you know, I feel like. I realized because we made this decision, we have to also put in the effort to uh, to try to raise them as best as we can. Um, uh, like no excuses, no, um, um, uh, because it is hard. Every day is hard with these little little people that we made. It's it is so, and and the, again, this is why. Not everyone should be having kids just because you can. And yes, I realized early on, um, many of us are mistakes. Well, you know, rarely parents, parents come together and say, we're going to have a kid. And so we're going to try. Maybe we see <clears throat> that more often now, but uh, the, you know, going back a long time, I mean, it just happens. As an adult, I said to myself, when we heard about it, I'm like, damn, this is, this is going to be a difficult time for me. And I, I had to cope with it and, and learn how to have that acceptance of like changing roles uh, and to be a father. But two things came to mind. You either step up to the plate and you fulfill that duty to the best of your ability and beyond, you know, even if you fall short, you have to learn to, to make up for it and do better next time. Uh, or you don't. And when you don't, you uh, you inevitably uh, will see issues in the kids that are being raised. The system raises them. Social media raises them. Uh, the education system raises them. And uh, naturally, you have a lot of the issues that we see today. Just it's my opinion for whatever it's worth. I mean, I feel your your love and your passion for your children. And it's like. <laughs> I feel like it's like, I mean, I'm not a father myself yet. Um, 
but I imagine like life is like, like sometimes like we need, like struggles are good sometimes. It builds like certain aspects of ourselves and just like, just like as a parent, just like having, having the love and the support and understanding like we are human. So just like, I don't want to say like flawless because I don't think anything's a flaw. It's just like, it's an opportunity for your children to grow in a certain way. So it's like maybe something that you don't like. Like I look at my dog, like I'll use my dog, for example. Or I don't know if I can actually, but I just think like children can build upon, <laughs> children can totally build upon like things that they don't like about their parents. Where it's like, it's almost like, it's beneficial to not like certain things about their parents. Um, and I don't know if I'm just like looking at this in like a totally like glass half full or like rose colored glasses way, but, but I don't you, know, have, I think, you have a unique perspective though. It's, it's true. Yeah, I, I would agree. But yeah, I think it thought, comes back please. to, yeah, and I think it comes back to what you were saying earlier about just like, reacting to things like is this thing good or is this thing bad and it's like well, i don't know that's like how we're going to react to it and so it's like yeah reminds me of the uh, the chinese farmer yep this is my favorite i know where yeah. you're going i was gonna yeah. bring it up but i'll let you do it you? No, well yeah. i mean since you know it already it's just like no, you know it's, it. um uh, what is it the uh uh you know uh stable of horses some of them end up escaping and they run away the village people come they say well that's terrible he says maybe maybe you know maybe <laughs> <laughs> uh the next day some of them return they're like oh that's great maybe uh then yeah. you know uh one day his kid's riding a horse or something and he breaks his leg somehow and they're like that's yeah. terrible he says maybe yeah. Uh, the following day, the military comes to do some recruiting and they just walk right past this kid because they can't use anybody without legs. They're like, wow, <laughs> that's great. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I, that's like a very Zen way of looking at life. And I think that's a way we can experience life if we want to. Not to say that the other way is wrong. Or it's like maybe we want to feel like life as a little bit more of a roller coaster. It's like, oh, this is something happened, like this bad. It's like, so it's like changing certain energies within our body to like to feel some sort of excitement. Um, so yeah, I don't think there's any wrong way of being as long as we're not hurting other people or like being malicious. Um, there's some things in the world that I believe are hard to say. It's like try to find a silver lining for it. But maybe it's, it's somewhere deep down, some spiritual level, there is a silver line into everything. If you search, you may find it. That's yeah. for sure. But I agree with what you're saying that, you know, finding something that you particularly don't like about your parents, it just, it, that's not a bad thing. It can lead you to, Im, you know, improve on that, to say like, well, I didn't like that and I'm going to not do that behavior, you know, and um, inevitably wire them a little differently so that they can yeah. uh so that they can um grow up to be a little more productive i can tell you there are things about um my parents for sure that growing up i look back on as an adult and say yeah i didn't like those things and it, it's no wonder why it turned out the way i did um it's no wonder why i'm as ambitious as i am as creative as i am and mm. um forward thinking and just just all of these things that I find to be strengths in my life, I say some of those things came from those aspects. Some of them came from the freedom. So though I was neglected and I didn't have many friends, I think that impacted uh, my life a lot too. Mm. Uh, as, a, as a child, I, I wasn't given the opportunity to socialize much, um, especially with divorced parents and uh, whenever I would spend time with my dad, like going through his depression and everything, like in just the kind of job he was doing, he was always sleeping. Like we wouldn't really spend that much time together doing anything. Right. Um, yeah. And and that made me sad thinking about it. So, um, you know, as a result, uh, as I, as an adult, I say, well, 
you know, I'm going to do more things with my kids and I see that there's interest. So like yeah, last night, you know, my daughter uh, wanted to do some arts and crafts and do some cutting and drawing. And she's like, you're going to do this with me? Like, fuck yeah, I'm going to do this with you. <laughs> you know? and, and so and, and so we just start cutting and just drawing stuff, playing tic-tac-toe. And, and then I'm like, hey, you know, should I order you some uh, some animal books and things that you can cut out and, and like uh, cut and paste type of stuff? She's like, yeah, maybe you can order it. It'll come soon. I'm like, how about I order it now? You know, and, <laughs> Man, the system's great. It's going to come. Like, <laughs> it's gonna come in a, yeah, it's going to come in a day or two. And, you know, um, and I I sensed it right then and there where she's like, you're going to, you know, and uh, you're going to do this with me. Uh, it's just so important to spend that time with them and um, and to do these things. They may not seem like much, uh, but it uh, it can mean the world to them. We just don't realize yeah. it. We don't, we don't yeah, recognize man. it, right? B life is busy. We're so busy. We got to work. We got to do these things. And I've been trying to build my businesses around the freedom that I desire. Not, you know, because typically people will say, if you're running a business, you know, then it's, you know, like all hands on full time. And I was like that. I used to do, you know, 14, 15 hours a day. And I did that for like five years. Um, and then I had my kids and I said like, I can't do this anymore. It's just mm -hmm. not realistic. So I started redesigning, started figuring out ways to make it work. And so far it's working and it's not particularly great. I'm not wealthy, you know, I'm comfortable. And, uh, but the universe and the, you know, and the ambitions are all lining up to set up something really magical. Because the desire is there and the the work ethic is there. It's just restructuring the time frames in which we are productive uh, to do those things so that the rest of the time we can wake up and spend with our kids. We can make it home for dinner and, you know, sit down together and eat and, and laugh and be joyful. Uh, such simple things like that uh, do mm -hmm. make a world of difference for for children. Um, rather than just being absent full time and having the reasoning of like, well, we have to earn. Inevitably, yes, we do, but we can find smarter ways to do it. So, mm. you know, that's my story, man. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, Tom. And it's like, I'm sure there's so much more to it as well. Um, Probably. Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> a lot to our stories. So, and I, I feel like, we understand things better once whatever that future comes. It's like whatever's happening now, it's like we have a better understanding of why things happened once we're living in that future. And for yeah. me, it's like I try to make mental marks of like, all right, what was I worried about when I was a teenager? And does that still, like, does that worry still exist now inside of me? It's like, all the things I was worried about, it's like, oh, how am I going to like afford a house? Like, I can't like imagine like all the stuff I couldn't imagine being in my life. And I'm like, I don't know how it's going to work. But uh, now it's like, now it's here. It's like, all right, I'm living in this life that I could not have imagined for myself. I was too worried. I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. So it's like, what am I thinking about now? Like, let's do another trial run of this to see what it's all about. Or it's like, what am I worrying about now that I'm afraid won't come in the future? So when it does come and I'm living it, I can look back at this moment and be like, ah, I did it again. I was worried about this thing not happening. But now I, now I had more of a mindful experience through the process where then hopefully I could help other people kind of just like where a guy could speak from an embodied and an experienced place and kind of a mindful place of recognizing where I was at with everything. So hopefully sometime in the future, I can help other people with this as well. Just kind of like, what do you want? Let's focus on it now. It's like, it might not happen instantaneously, but let's start like planting those seeds. Let's like be lighter with it. Let's like let, let it come to us. And then I feel like, um, I believe that things happen quicker when we do lighten up our bodies. 
So like what you're talking about before, like making decisions on fear. It's like, that's like heavy. That feels heavy. Fear feels heavy. So then what we're trying to get to will take a little bit longer. But if like anything that needs to get released in our body, we can lighten up, then I feel like we're letting things come through us. I forget where I heard it, but I love it, is we don't go through things. Things go through us. So if like, <laughs> it's like if we allow things to go through us, then it is like, is that how we're experiencing time? And if like we're lighter, then it's like, is that what it means to be enlightened? To just like to be constantly in the present moment where it's like things are just flowing and there's no such thing as time. Everything's just happening now. I don't know what that looks like. <laughs> if I ever get that, I'll let you know. Um, and what would that look like externally as well? If we do get to that state, I don't know. <laughs> but now that I'm asking this question for myself, it's like, what is going to happen on my path now? And it's like, what's going to start unfolding for me? And I feel like having these conversations and hopefully your fans get something out of this, but I think it's ultimately just like the relationship we have with ourselves, like within ourselves, being curious about what's going on within us, like talking about, like talking about it. And because I feel like that, that gives things more energy. And then that kind of like allows our life to unfold. So it's like, rather than focusing on all the external stuff, I just like, that's what the inner work is, kind of just like talking about things. You know, things like, might not make sense all the time, but just like giving yourself in attention, giving yourself attention, like trying to figure yourself out. Sometimes it can take a while for some, a lifetime, you know? Uh, yeah. This is why wisdom comes with time. It's one of the things I thought about several years ago. I'm like, age doesn't equal wisdom because no. you could ign you could ignore a lot of things, and I've seen it in people. You know, they could be 50, they could be 60. You know, the regrets they live with, and or the the things they missed out on, um, is the is a direct correlation with the. Uh, inability to accept wisdom and to self-reflect and to grow. And um, it's very difficult. It's very painful to watch and see in an older individual um, because it, it does have its scars and they can be sure. visible if you're receptive to it. But, um, you know, I, you know, I want to see where this goes. And I think uh, the, as the saying uh, ask and you shall receive and focus on what you want and not what you don't want. Um, and, uh, and it's not always about material things, like mm -hmm. how you started off, like, what do we want, you know, in mm -hmm. this lifetime, in this plane of existence. And, you know, for me, it's, uh, and I imagine for a lot of people, it's pretty basic. Um, just, Health, wealth, happiness, family, joy, laughter, freedom. Um, you know, these are, they seem simple, but the way society is structured, um, one or more of those things are very, very difficult to, um, to grasp. Uh, and uh, they, sh they should be collectively sought out. You, you shouldn't just want, you shouldn't just seek freedom without joy. And you shouldn't just seek joy without uh, health. And you you want all of these things. At least I do. I want all of these things. And I will not sacrifice anything um, to leave any of those out of the equation. I, uh, I sincerely enjoyed our conversation. I'm going to have to end it here. But please do come back on and let's talk more about your experiences and where this leads you to and how it is you're able to help your patients uh, kind of discover themselves for the first time uh, to be able to manifest, you know, their, you know, their true selves, their, you know, their futures, mm -hmm. including uh, your own, where, you know, yeah. where you are, where you're going, where do you want to be? What, you know, how are you getting there? And though the things that we talked about are intangible, right? Yeah. You no, know, 
you called it witchcraft, but um, there's powerful forces oh, yeah. in, in this world, in this existence. I mean, whatever it is, this matrix of existence, it's um, there, there's very powerful forces and um, learning what they are, learning how to use them, being open to experimenting with them. I think the, this is part of a, a bigger issue of society is yes. um, wanting things on demand and without putting the work. Um, work doesn't always mean you'll be suffering for the next five years to attain your goals, but a little bit of consistency and application and, and experimentation and trying different things. And right. You as a creative person, you, you have a master's degree in mental health counseling but your openness and willingness to experiment with art and writing and speaking and uh, everything else um, is, I want to say, a huge contributor to, you know, where you will end up as you continue to follow this path. I appreciate that. And I think, I think you now do just like allowing ourselves to be open to things. It's like, letting go versions of ourselves like it can be scary but it's like sometimes we gotta let go versions of ourselves so we can be open to a new idea of who we want to be or a new idea of how things work in this reality so i i appreciate you you having this program and being creative and like talking about these subjects because like who knows like how many people it helps. Like I know it helps me. Like it helps me on so many levels to have these conversations, to be on this side of it. Or it's like, I get to do my own self exploration and, and see where I do go. And then I can reflect back on this conversation, but like, oh yeah, this is what we're talking about. And it's like, no, we're here. No, we're here in this life. So and kind of learning how all this works, like how all this works of being human and like managing our lives. So, so I appreciate being on. 